We often share these beautiful little chickadee birds with you guys here on our channel because they frequent our property so much. We get to enjoy them all year long here in Alaska. And it got me to thinking about these little birds. So I did a little research and they are quite spectacular. Did you know that these little birds store food in little caches and little, you know, tree crevices, and then they go back and get that food later. And with the extreme cold temperatures, you would wonder like, how do these tiny little birds stay warm? How do their little tiny skinny legs and feet not freeze? It's just amazing. So they have a half inch thick coat of feathers that keeps them nice and warm. And you notice in the winter, they get really fat. Well, it's really not that they're fat. They're just puffing up their feathers to stay warm. Those down feathers underneath keep them super warm at the core. They work so hard all day collecting food and then at night they go into these little crevices in the trees and they basically go into a controlled state of hypothermia and they drop their body temperatures drastically at night and they shiver all through the night, basically burning through all the calories that they work to gain all day long. They're quite amazing little birds. They have an average lifespan of about two years and they keep the same mate their whole life, which I think is super sweet. And it just got me to think about you guys. Uh, you guys often tell us, you know, we inspire you, we encourage you, we keep you smiling through the darkest days, and you guys must know that you inspire us too. With all the Christmas cards that we got this year, so many of you told me your stories, and a lot of you are battling some really hard things in your life, and cancer, medical diagnoses, and just things that are out of your control. And I just want to remind you, just like these little birds, right, that the Lord is going to take care of us and see us through. And looking at these little chickadees, it reminds me of Matthew 6, 26. It says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? I just love that verse. And these little birds really are a true depiction of how the Lord takes care of us through even the darkest seasons of our lives. Good morning, friends, and welcome back to the cabin for another video. Look what just came in the mail yesterday. Look at that. Christmas cards, finally. New Year's, but we're going to get them out. We're going to get that done today because you guys have sent us, like, how many cards, Joe? Like, close to 400? 450, something like that. I don't even know. We've yet to count and get the final number, but we have a ton of you that are waiting on Christmas cards from us. So we are going to be working on getting that done today. We're super excited. They finally came in. They lost our shipment. I had to call the company and it was just this big fiasco, but they're here. So we will get those going out in the mail to you guys in the next couple days. I'm really excited. So today is a very special day because we have a birthday boy among us, Joe. Joe, don't run from the camera, Joe. Joe's birthday is today, yay! Birthday hair. You know, it's the week after Christmas. That's how we roll. Everybody needs haircuts. The house is a mess. We're off of school, doing laundry, vegging out, watching TV shows and movies. That's the way it should be after Christmas, right? Sure. So yeah, so this is our birthday boy. Joe, tell him how old you are today. 16. 16. Woo, that put me in prison. <laughs> Joe is 43. Oh, 43. I met Joe when I was 15. Joe was like 18 when we met in high school. And so this is many, many birthdays that I've been with him. So today we're just hanging out. As you saw, it is super super cold today, like negative 12, negative 13, something like that. But we have some projects in the house, as you guys know, that we have started, but we have yet to finish. So I think today we're gonna to be tucking in where it's warm and finishing up some of the projects inside the cabin. One of which is the walls that we started building for the boys. You probably can't see through our beautiful Christmas card display. Can you see, can you see? We started building walls in the loft for them so that they have an enclosed bedroom so that we don't have to worry about being super sneaky, quiet on the first level of the cabin late at night after they're in bed. So I'm really excited about that. The wood planking looks absolutely beautiful, has that Alaska cabin feel, and I just love the way it's turned out. So we're gonna finish working on that today. We still have to get a door. We do not have a door yet, so we're gonna have to get that next time we go into town. The other project that we're gonna work on is finishing our super cute, rustic kitchen ceiling that we started 
a year ago. You guys remember that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Been busy. Been busy. So we took out the drywall last winter and started putting in the super cute wood planking in the kitchen ceiling just to give it more of like that cozy cabin feel. We don't, we hate drywall. <laughs> so we're gonna finish that finally today. It's a beautiful sunny day, even though it's cold, so we can work the saw out front and get that done. So that's the plan for today. We're just kind of hanging out, getting these Christmas cards finally done for you guys and finishing up some of these inside projects. A little update on Rusty. Rusty got neutered yesterday, huh? So we're gonna let him lay in the kennel today just to kind of rest. He's got those uh, little open incisions, so I wanna make sure he's not wrestling around with the dogs or doing anything he shouldn't be doing, but he is neutered. And I got a lot of comments on the last video saying like, oh, don't you know once they're neutered, they still keep spraying. Well, sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. Uh, if you look it up, it says actually like 87% of the cats that get neutered, they never spray again. You do have that small percentage that do. So unfortunately for Rusty, he better hope that that's not him because I will not have a spraying cat in my house. I just won't. Call me mean. Call me a bad cat owner. I really don't care. Cat spray stinks horribly. So if he doesn't quit spraying after we've neutered him, we will rehome Rusty. He sprayed several several times in the cabin, like I told you guys, uh, a couple times on my couch, a few times over here on where we hang the jackets and all the snow pants. And, you know, we've had male cats before, and once they were neutered, they didn't spray. So we have not had an issue with that, and we're hoping that neutering Rusty corrects that problem. But if it doesn't, he will, he will be rehomed. There's just no way to stop him from doing it at that point. And he's obviously not allowed to be an outdoor cat anymore because of somebody shooting Asher. Uh, we will not take that chance again, you guys. We can't take that chance. We had a lot of people that were like, they're cats, let them be cats. I mean, let them go outside. I get that, I understand that. Trust me when I say, I wish that they could still go outside freely and roam the property, and I'm sure they wish they could too. But the fact of the matter is that emergency vet visit for Asher's arm getting amputated was a pretty penny, and we just, can't take that chance knowing that we have some kind of psychotic neighbor out there that's gun happy and likes to, you know, shoot innocent house cats. So I can't take that chance anymore. And not only that, it's not fair to the cats. Now that we know we've got someone out there with the shotgun that is killing house cats, uh, it's not just our cat. We've heard from some other neighbors. This has been an ongoing issue. We can't, we can't take that chance. We've got to protect our cats. That's what good pet owners do. So uh, happens once, shame on us, isn't gonna happen again. We're not gonna let that happen. So they have to be indoor cats other than being allowed to go out in the catio that you guys saw that we built on the side of the cabin. And then maybe, you know, the boys can take them out on leashes and things like that in the summer where they're under our control, that's one thing, but they will not be allowed to freely roam the property anymore. So. Once we brought them in, Rusty was not happy about that and started spraying in the house. He had never sprayed in the house prior to that. So it's been rough with the kitties, but he is neutered now. And the hope is that that will stop the spraying problem. We do have some fantastic news about little Asher though. Little Asher got to take his shirt off for good. So his incision is completely healed up and closed finally. And we had that little red t-shirt on him that the vet put on him on purpose because it kept him from scratching his incision open while it was healing. And he's almost done with his antibiotics because his incision did get infected. He's got like, I don't know, two or three days left of that antibiotic, but it worked. It healed his little incision up. When we took his uh, t-shirt off, he turned into like crazy cracked out kitty, started running all over the house and eating our toes and our hands. And he was just super excited to get that shirt off. So... Little Asher's doing so much better. Well, you're tired now, huh? Because you run around the house like a crazy kitty. Yeah. Show you guys his little incision. Let's see if I can just turn over. So this is pretty much, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to be the star of the camera? His little incision, it's not very little. Actually, it goes clear from here all the way up to the top of his shoulder, but this was the part that was infected and uh, it was pretty bad. It was caked up and oozing yellow and it was completely open and not healing and now it's completely closed as you can see and nice and soft. It's got a little bit of scab on there still but he's doing really good. Aren't you Asher? Yeah, my little three-legged kitty. <laughs> Does that feel good? Oh yeah, did that feel good? 
sweet baby. Tonight I'm making a delicious lamb roast for dinner with that beautiful lamb that we harvested just a couple months ago. I'm gonna just give this a little searing on all sides so it helps retain that moisture while it's cooking in the crock pot all day today. I love crock pot meals, they're super easy. You just set it and forget it, right? That's what I'm talking about. We are working on these Christmas cards. I'm so happy that they finally came in. I was just devastated when they lost the shipment because this was our first year doing a Christmas card exchange with you guys. And we have gotten, it has to be well over 500 cards from not just around the country, but all over the world, Scotland and Switzerland and Australia, it was so exciting for the boys to get to see all of the cards from around the world. Next year, I think we're going to request, if you can, to send an address label in your envelope if you do address labels, just because some of the cards were a little hard to read and some of them, to be honest, my fingers are crossed hoping that they make it back to you because I wasn't able to read the entire address. And some people actually forgot to put their return address on the envelope. So sadly, some people were not able to send cards back to you. Nonetheless, it was a beautiful Christmas card exchange, and I just want to thank all of you that participated. We thoroughly enjoyed it. And Joe says our Christmas card says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, so technically we're not late, right? <laughs> Now there are a lot of different variations to a good roast, but I just keep it simple. I season it with salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of thyme and rosemary. And I chop up some carrots nice and chunky with some potatoes and diced onions, throw those in there and let that all simmer. And it's just delicious. I mean, you can do mashed potatoes if you want to. A lot of times I do that because I like to dip my roast in the mashed potatoes and gravy. But tonight, honestly, I did not feel like cooking. So I just did diced potatoes in the crock pot and then I am going to make a little bit of a gravy on the side that we can just put over the whole thing and it's going to be warm and yummy and it's going to fill the bellies and that's what matters right strong but life can be furious and things can go wrong you go you go we're better off tomorrow but who knows who knows if we get joy or sorrow Desiring what you can't control. We fly, we fly, try so hard together, and we might, we might be lost, but not forever. Things in life you simply need to know But 
sun and rain and trust in letting go It takes a bit of suffering Sleepless nights and wondering If boy you make it safely to the end The end, the end And if you ever wonder There is nothing wrong with a little thunder There's things in life you simply need to know About sun and rain and trust in letting go It takes a bit of suffering Sleepless nights and wandering Before you make it safely to the end Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you It takes a bit of suffering Sleepless nights and wandering Hello, good morning. Welcome back to the cabin for another day. We just got up a little bit ago and um, I know I have like swollen face. Do I have a swollen face? Oh yeah, I've got a swollen face, that's okay. Uh, it's cold, it's a cold one today. It's, a, it's about negative 23 degrees and we have a frozen pipe issue. <laughs> the the uh, water will not come on in the bathroom. So we are gonna have to go out and troubleshoot what's going on under the crawl space of the cabin things like this always happen when it's so freaking cold outside like the worst time like when you definitely don't want to go outside and have to fix something it happens when it's this cold so we uh joe's like i've got to go out there and see what's going on and i'm like joe let's have coffee first like the the pipe is frozen it's gonna be frozen whether we check it now or we have our coffee let's just finish our coffee so he's brought in a little portable heater to thaw that out and I think what we're gonna do is just go over there to the crawl space and try to heat that space up a little bit uh, it's funny because we've never had this problem before and last year last winter it got 
as cold as negative 30 and we never had any issues with any of the pipes freezing but the kitchen sink is working so it's like it's just the back of the house pipe so um, Joe said maybe the crawl space door is cracked and it's not closed all the way. We don't know, but we're going to go out there and check it out in just a few minutes. Yeah, I could cook. Kurt was on breakfast duty this morning. What are you making, P? Uh, I'm making some eggs. Some eggs. What are you going to do with them now? I'm going to make a spam and egg sandwich. Okay. Put some extra peppers there. Spam and egg sandwiches. Yeah. All right. Don't burn the house down, okay? Okay. <laughs> was that the crawl space door was left open probably about that much so I don't know Joe works under here a lot he's been working on this for the addition so somehow it was left open and that's probably why the pipes in the back of the house are frozen so we've got this little portable heater propane heater set up and Joe's gonna sit that underneath the crawl space for a little bit and hopefully thaw out the pipes we also have a it's hard to breathe out here when it's this cold we also have a heater going inside the cabin uh, in the bathroom, so heating the space um, from the outside and the inside hopefully will do the trick. It's hard to breathe out here, huh? And that's safe to be under there, Joe? Probably not. Probably not. Guess we'll just have to keep an eye on it, huh? Yeah. Well, hopefully that does it. I'll probably just hang out under here for a little bit. Hang out under here? <coughs> and then you just need to uh, watch the faucets because they're all on right now. Do you want a jacket? Another jacket? Nope. What's, what's a little bit? Like 10, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna be in there where it's warm? Yeah. I, th I thought you were sitting out here. That's why I was like, yeah. what do you mean hang out for a little bit? Crazy? I have to watch this. Okay, all right, I'll go inside and watch the faucets. Okay. Right. When I was a little girl, about eight years old, we lived in Iowa. My mom, me, and my two younger brothers, my sister had already moved out. And we lived in a trailer park, and one day the pipes froze and we had no running water, so my mom had me get on my snowsuit, my jacket, and all my gear, and I took a blow dryer with an extension cord, and she had me go under the, the crawl space of the trailer and lay there with the blow dryer on the frozen pipe. And uh, it worked, you know, do what you gotta do. <laughs> shower's on, shower's on. Okay, I'm gonna go tell Joe, let that run. The water's running in the shower and the bathroom sink. It's just the hot water's not working in the kitchen yet. All right. But it's like full flow in the it's, shower and the bathroom. It's the hot working? Yeah. You turn the colds off and make sure the hot was on? Oh, no. We'll turn the colds off and see if the hot's on. Okay. Yeah. That is the hot water. All right. There's the hot water in the kitchen sink. That's good. The, the hot water is running and it's running in the kitchen now too. It's all running? It's all, yeah, hot water, cold water, everything's running. Alright. So it must have just barely been frozen. Yeah, because that wasn't even five minutes. That's awesome. <laughs> Is 
So gotta make sure the crawl space door's shut, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So on days like this, when it's this cold, the chickens don't even want to come out of the coop, which is fine. It's an insulated coop, so I mean, obviously, it's still chilly in here, but it's not as cold in here as it is out there. So the chickens prefer to stay inside the coop, and we just fill up their water once or twice a day. It does freeze pretty quick, but you know that's one reason we put the coop right next to the cabin. Uh, when it's cold out, the faucet on the outside does work, but when it's this cold and the negative temps, it does not work. So the boys bring the bucket to the front door and we just fill it up with the faucet in the sink, so in the kitchen. But yeah, so they, they like to stay inside on days like this and I can't blame them. <laughs> I can help you. It is really cold. And when it's this cold out here, it's extremely hard to breathe. So, as long as you have something over your nose and your mouth, it seems to be a little bit easier. I do have a balaclava, but it's back at the cabin. So we have yet to stock up enough firewood for a whole winter season. We did a lot last year, this summer, and this fall as you guys know, those of you that have been following us, but not enough for the whole winter. And some of the wood we got this summer is still wet, so it doesn't burn that good. So we come out usually once every couple weeks, get down a tree or two and stock up on the front porch so that we've got wood for the, for the cold days. Cause it's definitely cold, but I told Joe, we're just doing one tree today and then we need to go inside and chill out. Like, play some games with the boys, watch a movie, have some coffee, whatever. But it's a little too cold to be playing outside. You know what I'm saying? It's too cold. I don't like it. But we're gonna finish getting this tree. We're gonna haul it up to the cabin, split the wood, get it stacked, and then go back in where it's toasty. The chainsaw ran out of gas. So Joe went to get more gas. I opted to keep working so we can get back in the house faster. <laughs>
actually stuck. No, you're not. Joe, I can't get up. I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't breathe out. Why would you lay down like that? I didn't mean to, obviously. Wait. <laughs> and there's a branch right here. Put backwards. I can't. Like I have frosties, is that what you're doing? I'm a frosty princess. 